friends, it's Mrs. Rock. I was just talking to my friend here and I, I didn't notice you there. Today, I'm going to show you how to make paper puppets. Get ready. Here are the materials you're going to need. start by making the foundation for our paper puppet. For mine, I've chosen this bright green construction paper. So I've placed the paper in front of me so it's portrait style. That means the short side is closest to me. And I'm going to place my hands underneath the paper and put my thumbs on the edges. And what I want to do is kind of curl in my paper, but I want one side to go underneath and one side to go on top. And then I'm just going to flatten it down. But if I opened it up, you would see that I have now two folds here. So I have a third, a third, and another third. I'm gonna fold it back up again. See how I have kind of like this door here? I'm gonna take this whole enchilada and I'm gonna flip it on over. So now I'm looking at the middle third of my paper, but I don't see any of those doors. The doors are on the bottom. Now I'm going to take one half of my paper and fold it over. And I have to kind of use my other fingers as helpers because that construction paper is kind of thick. And I'm gonna fold it over in half so that one edge meets the other edge and I'm gonna fold it down here. It's pretty difficult to make this crease. You can see I'm having a little trouble here because that paper is so thick, but I'm just gonna give it a little pinch and make sure that crease is as crisp as I can get it. So if I turned it on its side, it kind of looks like the letter V. So I'm gonna take my letter V, put it back down on my table, and I'm gonna take this first flap and I'm going to fold it in half so that this edge here touches this crisp crease here. So I'm taking half of my V and folding it to that crease. And I'm gonna make a nice crisp crease here. Next, I'm going to turn this whole thing over and I'm gonna take this side of the paper and I'm using my other hand as a helper and I'm gonna fold it back so that it meets this crisp crease here. And give it a good push, give it a good pinch so you have a nice crisp crease. And if I kind of let go of this and look at it on its side, it looks like the letter M. Or you could turn it this way and it looks like the letter W. That's how I know I've folded my paper puppet correctly. I'm going to look for one edge of my paper puppet here and I'm going to put my thumb inside that opening and then I'm going to look on the other edge here. If I kind of give it a squeeze you can see there's another opening there and that's where I'm going to put my other fingers. And now I have made a paper puppet. Hi, I'm Mrs. Rock's puppet. Now we can add all that other fun stuff to give it some personality. I happen to have a scrap of red paper here that I used for some other project, and so I'm gonna use that to create my tongue. The shape I'm gonna cut out is kind of like a big upside down U shape. And when I glue, I like to remember to always glue the pencil side down, or in this case, my Sharpie side. Artists are kind of like magicians in that you don't really want to reveal your secrets. And my pencil lines are kind of like the part of my magic that I don't want to reveal. My favorite method is what I call drawing with glue. And when I draw with glue, I actually touch the tip of my glue bottle to my paper so that I have more control over where the glue is going. And I'm not even really squeezing that hard. I let gravity do the work for me. So see how I've drawn with glue? I have a lot more control that way. I'm gonna take my tongue. Remember, figure out where the middle of your paper puppet is, the middle of the mouth. And I'm gonna glue my tongue 
to the inside of the mouth on the bottom so that if I put my hand in my paper puppet and I opened it up, it would look like my paper puppet is saying, ah. Next, I'm gonna create some eyes for my paper puppet. So I'm gonna use some white paper. And again, I'm gonna make that same really long U shape like I made for the tongue. Before I go ahead and draw that, I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm actually gonna fold my paper in half because if I want two eyes, that look the same, I'm gonna fold my paper. Then I'm going to draw the shape that I want. And then if my paper is folded and I cut on that line, voila, now I have two identical pieces of paper that I can use for my eyes. But you know what, it's too difficult to glue the eyes of my paper puppet down if I just have this little sliver of paper. So I'm gonna create a tab. And I do that by just taking my paper and folding a little bit of it down. So there's a little rectangle here that I can put glue on. So I'm gonna make a tab for this eye. And I'm gonna make a tab for the other eye. And I'm gonna try to make them the same. Oh, mine are a little bit different. And so again, I'm gonna draw with my glue touch the tip of my glue bottle to my paper, gently squeeze and draw with my glue. And then I can glue that tab down onto my paper puppet. I leave room for some hair or other little details back there. And I leave a little room up here. Again, notice I've hidden those marker lines towards the back. I don't wanna reveal my secrets to anybody. Well except for you, you get all my secrets. There are my two eyes, but guess what's missing? The pupils. So now I've got to cut out some pupils. All right, now I've got my two circles and these will be the pupils for my paper puppet. I love this part of making my paper puppet because I feel like there's instant personality when you add the pupils. Now I'm gonna show you how to make some teeth for your paper puppet. And so I'm gonna use some of that white scrap paper. You could make your teeth rounded or rectangular or pointy even. I think his teeth are going to go here, but I want them to stick out a bit. So I'm gonna fold those tabs again. I think it'll be really funny if I add some crazy eyelashes to the back of their eyes. So what I'm gonna do is just cut out some strips of paper. my eyelashes kind of curly. So what I need is a pencil. This is a colored pencil, so it's pretty smooth on the outside, so it makes a really curly eyelash. So I just take one edge of my eyelash strip and I carefully curl it around the pencil. And it's hard to get started, but once you get it started, try to hold it tight in place and keep wrapping it around that pencil until you get all the way to the end. Hold it in place and the heat and the pressure from my fingers kind of train the paper to stay in that curled shape. So when you let go, you end up with a really curly piece of paper. And this is gonna be one of my crazy curly eyelashes that I can glue to the back of my eye. So I'm gonna keep going with that and making some more crazy curly eyelashes. Whoa, those are some crazy eyelashes. 
awesome. I think my paper puppet needs some hair now. Ooh, I've got some orange here. That's gonna make some crazy orange hair. So I'm gonna start off with just a rectangle shape. Is it a perfect rectangle? No, but that's okay, it doesn't need to be. And I'm gonna cut fringe. So it's the same kind of idea as the eyelashes, but all of the strips will be connected on the same piece of paper. I'm going to make some real skinny strips, but I'm not gonna cut all the way. I'm leaving about a finger width, maybe even almost two finger widths here on the edge of my piece of paper. And now this fringe can be the hair from my paper puppet. Remember, I'm going to fold a tab again. That's why we left so much space down here on the end of our paper. Just decide where you want your hair. You could even make a mohawk. I could make an accordion fold, and that makes a really interesting texture with my hair. I do that by taking each piece of fringe, folding one way, then folding in the opposite direction, so it starts to make a zigzag line. Fold in the other direction, fold back the other way, and you keep flip-flopping directions until you get to the end of the fringe. And look, now I've got a funky piece of zigzag fringe. I'm gonna do that with all of my fringe. is a lot of funky texture. I'm gonna glue this mohawk this way and it kind of comes off the edge a little bit. Oh, I have an idea. I think I might cut this in half and glue two layers. So I'll glue one layer here. Whoa, that looks so funny. He's got a lot of personality now. Check it out. At this point, you could add some other little details. I'm gonna make some long jangly arms out of construction paper. So I need two long strips of paper about an inch wide. So I'm gonna pick up my paper and cut two long strips. So if you think about it, an inch is maybe about a little wider than your finger. My arms, I'm gonna fold the same way I made this texture for the hair. So I'm gonna take one end of my paper strip and I'm gonna fold it over. So it makes kind of like a little square or a rectangle. Then I'm gonna flip my paper over and I'm gonna fold it again. So it makes that zigzag shape. Flip it over, fold it again. Flip it over, fold it again. And if you get really good and fast, you can do it without flipping it over. Just by folding it one way, then the other. Hmm, I think I'll use this light blue color and I'm gonna make some hands. Now, the easiest way to make a hand where you don't really have to worry about fingers is kind of thinking about the shape of like a mitten. It's got a thumb and it's rounded like that. You could make a hand that has a thumb and four fingers. And I want two of these, so guess what? I'm gonna use that trick that I showed you earlier by folding my paper. To make these slinky legs and feet. You're gonna need four strips of paper this time. Each one 
about an inch wide, same as last time. And I think I'm gonna use two different colors. You can use the same color for all four strips if you want, but it kind of looks cool if you use two different colors. To make your slinky legs, you just need two strips at a time. So I'm gonna take two of my strips and I'm gonna form an L shape with them, like the letter L. I'm gonna glue my two pieces of paper together. I'm gonna to look for this line where my two pieces of paper come together and right at this line here is where my fold is going to be. So I'm gonna take my pink piece of paper and fold it over on that line so now there's a crease right here. And look, I've got a backwards L now. So next I'm gonna grab my purple piece of paper and right where that line is, that's where my crease is going to be and so I'm gonna fold it down. So now I've got a backwards and an upside down L. Now I'm gonna take my pink piece of paper again, I'm alternating either one, and I'm going to make a crease right there where that line is by folding the pink paper over my purple paper. Now I've got a upside down L. So now it's purple's turn, over the pink it goes, and I'm back to my original L. I'm gonna keep going until I don't have any more to fold. So I'm gonna take my glue, just put a little dot here on the end, fold it over. Oops, I went a little too far. Hold it in place so it stays together. And when you let go, you end up with a slinky leg. So I'm gonna do the same thing again with my other two strips. My foot shape, I kind of think of what a footprint looks like. It's like the bottom of a shoe. But if you want to get really detailed, really fancy, you can think about adding toes. Well, this guy only has four toes. Ooh, that's a funky looking foot. But you know what? My creature is really crazy. He's got a mohawk, so he's going to have some crazy feet to go with it. paper puppet is done. He is ready to move and groove and make new friends. Wait a minute, here comes a friend now. I hope you had fun making paper puppets with me today. Oh yes, I definitely had fun making paper puppets with you today. Oh, that's wonderful. Aren't you gonna say that thing? What thing? Say that thing you always say. Oh yeah. Remember, your paper puppet might look completely different than us. And that's okay, because when you're creating, the possibilities are endless. And now it's time for a joke. What do you call a puppet with no body and a nose? Nobody knows.